welcome all in this lecture we are going to deal with one more example that is example number 5 sketch the root locus of unity feedback control system with an open loop transfer function k varies from 0 to infinite and here we are given that the open loop transfer function which is denoted by g of s equals to k into s plus 1 over s square plus s plus 2 and here the value of k which varies from 0 to infinite so we need to sketch the root locus by following the all the step that we discussed in the previous videos so let's move on to the step number 1 that is determination of number of poles and number of zeros on equating the numerator part to zero we will get the number of zeros and on equating the denominator part to zero we will get our poles so firstly we will calculate the number of zeros So here, on equating the numerator part to zero, we will get our first zero at s equals to minus one. So our zero first, that is at one, will be at s equals to minus one. And here, no other terms in the numerator. That's why we will get only one zero. So the number of zero is exactly equals to one. Let's talk about the number of poles. so on equating the denominator part to zero we will get our poles so here on equating s square term to zero we will get two poles at zero only so the pole p1 will lie at zero and the pole p2 will also lie at zero and our third pole that can be calculated by equating s plus 2 equals to zero so we will get our third pole p3 at s equals to minus 2 so here the number of pole is equals to 3 let's move on to the next step that is calculation of number of branches of root locus so it can easily be calculated by the formula maximum of number of poles minus comma number of zeros <coughs> so the maximum of number of pole here is 3 and number of zero here is 1 so maximum of 3 comma 1 is exactly equals to 3 so we can say that number of branches of root locus is equals to 3 only let's move on to the step number 3 that is calculation of number of asymptotes so the number of asymptotes is equals to number of poles minus number of zeros so here number of pole is equals to 3 and number of zero is equals to 1 so number of asymptote is equals to 2 only moving to the next step that is calculation of centroid of asymptotes <laughs> so
so the centroid of asymptotes can easily be calculated by the formula summation of real part of pole minus summation of real part of zero whole divided by number of pole minus number of zero since we know that our pole r p1 at zero pole p2 also lies at zero pole p3 lies at minus two and we have one zero that lies at minus one so on summing all the real parts of pole that is zero zero and minus two we will get minus two only minus symbol after that on summing the real part of zero that is minus one whole divided by number of pole that is equals to three minus number of zero is equals to one so it will be equals to minus one divided by two so it is equals to minus 0 0.5 so the centroid of asymptote is equals to minus 0 0.5 let's move on to the next step step number five that is calculation of angle of asymptotes So the angle of asymptotes can easily be given by the formula phi equals to 180 into 2m plus 1 over number of pole minus number of zero. Here firstly we have to calculate the value of m here and since value of m ranges from zero and n adds p number of pole minus number of zero minus one so it will be start from zero and end at number of pole that is equals to three and number of zero that is equals to one minus one on calculating the value of m will be zero and one so we have to calculate the angle phi that is angle of asymptotes for the value of m equals to zero and m equals to one only at m equals to 0 angle phi will be equals to 180 2 m plus 1 here m value is 0 plus 1 divided by number of pole here is 3 and number of 0 here is 1 on calculating we will get 180 divided by 2 that is 90 degree this is our first asymptote angle on calculating the angle of asymptotes at m equals to 1 we get phi equals to 180 2 m value is 1 here plus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 so it will be exactly equals to 270 degree so here are the two angle of asymptotes moving on to the next step that is step number six in which we will calculate that root locus lies on which part of real axis <coughs> since we know that our pole p1 lies at zero pole p2 also lies at zero pole p3 lies at minus two and we have one zero that lies at minus one and we will plot the S plane that will look like this it is the imaginary axis it is our real axis firstly we will plot all these things so at zero we have pole p1 and at zero also we have another pole p1 p2 so we have two poles at zero only 
and we have pole P3 at minus 2 so it is minus 2 and we have this pole P3 and at minus 1 we have 1 0 so here is minus 1 and we have 1 0 here after this we have to find out in which region the root locus will lie on the real axis so the first region will range from 0 to plus infinite here is plus infinite so the reason 1 that is denoted by x1 will range from 0 to plus infinite here is x1 our second reason will lie between minus 1 to 0 so reason 2 that is denoted by x2 will start from minus 1 and end at 0 our reason th this is x2 our reason third will start from minus 2 and end at minus 1 reason third that is denoted by x3 will start from minus 2 and end at minus 1 and this is x3 and our reason 4 that is denoted by x4 will start from minus infinite to minus 2 this is x4 so let's talk about the reason x1 that is starts from 0 and and adds plus infinite so in the right hand side of x1 how many poles or zeros lies since we can see that no poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x1 that's why it is an invalid reason moving on to the next step that is reason 2 that is denoted by x2 which lies between minus 1 to 0 let's find out how many poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of this x2 so here we can see that two poles lies in the right hand side of x2 so here two poles are lies moving on to the next step that is reason x3 in the reason x3 that is lying from minus 2 to minus 1 let's calculate how many poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x3 so here 1 0 that is minus 1 and 2 poles at 0 lies in the right hand side of x3 so here 1 0 and 2 pole that is total 3 things lies in the right hand side of x3 let's talk about x4 in the x4 in right hand side of x4 how many poles or zeros lies so 1 2 3 and 4 4 poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x4 since it is an even number that's why it is an invalid reason it is an odd number so it is a valid reason it is an even number that's why it is an invalid reason so we can easily say that our root locus will lies in the region x3 that is minus 2 to minus 1 now move on to the next step that is angle of departure angle of arrival angle of departure or arrival since we have poles at 0 0 and minus 2 and 0 at uh, minus 1 so we can see that here are no imaginary poles or 0 that's why we can easily say that angle of departure and arrival does not exist here since angle of departure lies 
only in case of imaginary poles and we have no imaginary poles and angle of arrival lies only in case of imaginary zeros and we don't have any imaginary zero that's why it doesn't exist <laughs> moving on to the next step that is calculation of break in or break away point since we know that breakaway point will lies on the real axis if there are two conjugate poles but two conjugate poles are don't lie on this real axis that's why breakaway point does not exist and two conjugate zeros are not there on this real axis that's why both the break in and breakaway point does not exist moving on to the last and the final step that is plotting of the root locus on the s plane so here is the s plane this is the imaginary axis of s plane this is the real axis of s plane since we have number of pole equals to 3 so plotting all the poles on the s plane at s equals to 0 we have two poles here are the two poles at s equals to minus 2 we have again one pole at z equal at s equals to minus 1 we have one zero we know that the centroid of asymptotes lies at minus 0.5 that is minus 0.5 this is the centroid of asymptotes and there are two asymptotes which makes an angle of 90 degree and 270 degree so this is the 90 degree and this is 270 degree and we also know that the root locus lies between minus 2 to minus 1 that is in this region and we have also calculated that the number of branches is equals to 3 and since we have all studied that the root root locus branch will emerge from the pole and departs at the zero so this pole will emerge from this minus 2 and departs to this zero on the s plane of the real axis following this path so this is all about this pole and zero combination after this we have remaining two poles which lies at s equals to zero so these two poles will follow the path of 90 degree and 270 degree and will emerge to the imaginary zero so this pole will follow this path of 90 degree and go to the imaginary zero and remaining pole that also lies at s equals to zero will emerge from this point following the path of 270 degree it will also go to the imaginary zero so this is all about the plotting of the root locus on the s plane if you like my videos then press the like button and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you